Okay, here is our second book for round two, Trudy's Big Swim. How Gertrude Ederly Swam the English Channel and Took the World by Storm by Sue Macy, illustrated by Matt Collins. Wind buffeted the tugboat, Alsace, in the rough waters of the English Channel. With each gust, the men and women on board studied themselves before looking anxiously at the churning sea. They scanned the surface and did not relax until they spied a blur of red moving rhythmically through the waves. Gertrude Ederly in her cheerful swimming cap was still going strong. At 7.09 that morning, Gertrude, or Trudy, had waded into the surf from a beach in France. Her goal was to swim all the way to England by crossing the waterway between them, the English Channel, at its narrowest point. The distance measured about 21 miles on a map, but no one could swim across the channel in a straight line. Changing tides and swift currents threw swimmers off course, adding many miles to the journey. 200 people had tried to swim the channel before. Only five men had made it and none on their first try. They had to overcome violent storms, numbing cold, ex exhaustion, leg cramps, painful jellyfish stings, and ongoing fears about sharks. Trudy's trainer, Bill Burgess, had failed 12 times before succeeding. Now Trudy wanted to be the first woman to conquer the channel. England or drown is my motto, she had told reporters the day before. I could never face people at home again unless I had got across. Trudy was still smarting over her failed channel attempt the previous August. She was not used to failure. At a time when female athletes were finally starting to make headlines on the sports page, the New York Times had called Trudy the greatest free freestyle swimmer of her sex ever developed. She had burst into the swimming scene as a teenager in 1922, setting records in six different sprint distances in one day. In 1924, she earned one gold and two bronze medals at the Olympics. By 1925, Trudy had set 29 records in events as short as 50 yards and as long as a half a mile. That year, she also proved she could conquer longer distances, finishing a 22-mile swim from her hometown of New York City to Sandy Hook, New Jersey in 7 hours and 11 minutes. Now, Trudy battled the swelling waves of the channel, lifting her arms high to splash through the white caps. The summer of 1926 had been unusually cold and dreary, but when she set off this morning, August 6, the sun was shining and the water was calm. Everyone was in great spirits. The crew on the Alsace, Trudy's father, her sister Margaret, Bill Burgess, and a few others sang along to phonograph records to encourage her. The Star Spangled Banner, Let Me Call You Sweetheart, The Sidewalks of New York. Trudy swam to the rhythms of the songs and joined in during breaks to rest and eat. The rules forbade channel swimmers, swimmers from touching boats or other people during their crossings. So food was delivered from the boat in a net at the end of a pole. Trudy treaded water as she drank chicken broth from a baby bottle and gnawed on a leg of fried chicken. But around noon, while Trudy was eating, the wind picked up and the water became choppy. Conditions only got worse as the afternoon wore on. Trudy had to dodge chunks of driftwood stirred up by the current, along with slimy, poisonous jellyfish hurled at her by the waves. By 6 p.m., Bill Burgess began to fear that she would be injured if she kept swimming. Others aboard the Alsace grew worried, too. Finally, someone shouted, Come on, girl, come out! But Trudy, who was as determined as ever to finish, yelled back, What for? Her response set off a round of cheers. Trudy originally planned to swim to the British town of Dover, but at about 7.15 p.m., the tide started dragging her in the opposite direction. It was very difficult when I got close into Dover, she later remembered. I felt as if the sea were pulling me right away from England. Burgess quickly readjusted Trudy's course and told her to head northeast to the village of Kingsdown. That would add five miles to the trip. Despite the setback, Trudy continued swimming. By now, she had been in the water more than 12 hours. 
The coats of grease she had slathered on her body to keep warm had worn off. She was freezing and so very tired. As the sky grew dark, Trudy began to wonder if she would fail to accomplish her goal again. She called out to the Alsace to ask if the crew thought she could make it. Assured, they yelled back. They were certain she could. Not long after that, Trudy began to see bursts of red and green in the distance. News of her approach had spread along the coast north of Dover, and thousands of people had come out to greet her, lighting bonfires and colorful flares. Those with automobiles directed their headlights out to sea. A searchlight scanned the water, settling on the Alsace and the lone figure who propelled herself through the waves below. That figure continued to draw closer until finally at 9.48 p.m., Gertrude Ederly rose out of the water and stood on the English shore, just north of Kingsdown Beach. She had crossed the channel in 14 hours and 39 minutes. Not only was she the first woman to complete the swim, she also beat the record of the fastest man by close to two hours. After spending so long in a cocoon of water, Trudy needed a moment to adjust to solid ground, but swarms of well-wishers descended on her, reaching out to shake her hand or pat her on the back. Trudy started to panic and was relieved when her father and sister came on shore and directed her to a rowboat. She climbed in quickly and returned to the quiet calm of the Alsace. As the Alsace headed to Dover, newspapers around the world rewrote the lead stories for their next editions. The channel conquered by a girl, screamed the front page of a British daily. One of the greatest athletic achievements of all time, declared a German tabloid. Trudy left it to others to consider the meaning of her success. She made her way to Dover's Grand Hotel, where she scarfed down four ham sandwiches and some juicy fresh tomatoes. Then she took a long, hot bath and crawled into bed for a well-earned rest. The end. How incredible and brave was that story.